My entitled Karen of a boss screamed at me that I was lazy on the job after I passed out from exhaustion. And now I'm honestly just so glad I don't work at that job anymore because that boss truly was the worst thing I've ever dealt with in my life. Here's what happened. Years back, I worked in COVID testing and we were massively understaffed for the workload. I'm talking like three people doing roughly 2,000 tests a day. I was working six days a week from eight in the morning until two o'clock in the morning almost every every single day, and the earliest I would leave would maybe be 10 o'clock p.m., and on top of that, we would maybe get an hour break somewhere near 4 o'clock p.m. After a few months of this, it started taking a toll on my body. I developed severe nerve pain in my face and tremors down my right side. It got so bad, my father, who lives abroad, demanded that my boyfriend take me to the ER to get checked out because I was so busy I couldn't bring myself to go, and I didn't do it knowing that my boss would lecture me for long time. Well, I go to the ER and immediately get out in fluids and I'm given a litany of antidepressant medications as well as medications for the pain. I was also given Valium with no prescription and my doctor literally just said, uh, take one and if you can still feel things, take a second one and see if you can sleep. Well, after that, I go back to my shift at 12 o'clock p.m., completely exhausted but knowing I was in for a lecture from my boss. As I walk into the lab, my boss screeches at me, grabs me by the shoulder and told me I was lazy and irresponsible for calling in late, that there was so much work that we needed to do, and that she was docking my hours at the emergency room from my pay. I told her that I was going to finish this shift because I didn't want to leave my team high and dry, but I would need a few days to recover. Well, when I said that, she went red. She said to me, your generation is doomed to be lazy, inconsiderate jerks with no respect. She then took my phone from my lab coat, even though I was waiting for a specialist to call me about a possible surgery I might need due to nerve damage, and she said to me, your generation acts like children, so I'll treat you like one. She then actually left my phone out unattended at the front desk for about six hours, where literally anyone could have taken it. Eventually, I ended up collapsing at around 11.30pm on the job, and she found me and just yelled at me for falling asleep. She said that I had no shame, and even threatened to terminate my healthcare benefits. She actually told me to come into work work after my surgery too, and even told me that she hopes my uncle's cancer pulls through because she would not be able to afford to go to a funeral service. Needless to say, I definitely do not work there anymore, and honestly, I hope I never see that lady ever again. Wow, you had an awful boss. She is like the definition of an old entitled Karen who has to go after younger people all because they have, I don't know, medical issues. Like, just because you neglected your health to get where you're at doesn't mean I have to reciprocate it and end up like you. Like, seriously, you went to the emergency room. It's not like you went there just to, like, mess around. You clearly were not doing well, and your job was obviously taking a toll on your body. Like, how in the world could she not be more understanding of your situation? So, honestly, I'm so glad the original poster doesn't work there anymore. Because what you just described sounds absolutely atrocious. And you do not deserve to be treated like that in the slightest. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out. Link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My mom and grandmother decided to get back at the casino they worked at right after they got fired for ridiculous reasons. Here's what happened. Okay, so this story is about my mom and grandmother and they gave me permission to post it online. Quite a while ago, both my mom and grandmother worked for one of the local casinos. At the time, the casino had a 90-day trial and then you would get insurance. During the course of them working there during the 90-day trial, the casino switched their policy to an 18-month trial before getting insurance. So they then proceeded to find reasons to fire all of their employees who were coming up on the 90 days just so they wouldn't be grandfathered in. Now, my mom knew that this was coming because she saw person after person who were hired a little bit before her get fired for ridiculous reasons. So when she got called in the office the day after she had to go to the hospital for a severe allergic reaction, she knew what was coming. They actually marked it as a no-call, no-show show because she started having a severe allergic reaction on shift and her EpiPen didn't work. She walks into the office and she's informed that due to her no call no show she is being let go effective immediately. She asked for her final check and they informed her that she would receive the check after she turned in her uniform. Well in that moment my mother proceeded to strip down to her underwear and bra, drop the uniform on the supervisor's desk and demand her last check. She stood there in her underwear for 40 minutes while they 
they tried to convince her to turn the uniform in at a later date, but she said, nope, you said I'd get my check when I turned in my uniform. There, that's my uniform. I want my check. Eventually, they wrote a check, and she then walked out, taking the long route through the casino, saying her goodbyes to all of the staff and regulars on her way out. So, a couple days later, when my grandma had her shift, she knew what to expect because she was coming up on that same time frame. And you know what? My grandma proceeded to do the exact same thing. My grandma literally walked through the crowded casino in her underwear just to prove how ridiculous the management was being. I love everything about this story and I really think your mom and grandmother are heroes. Like, they did not take that sitting down. They decided to show the casino exactly how angry they are about this whole decision-making process and with the fact that they are literally just trying to, like, find reasons to fire people. Like, for starters, the fact that she went to the hospital for a severe allergic reaction, in my opinion, is more than enough reason to be like, yeah, this is why I didn't show up. I was literally trying not to pass away. Sorry that working at the casino doesn't take priority over my health. Like, it's so disgusting that they changed the insurance trial from 90 days to 18 months. Because, like, seriously, who's ever going to qualify for that? I know at other jobs I've worked at, 90 days is kind of like the standard procedure of, like, getting insurance. So to change it suddenly to, like, a year and a half all of a sudden, and then find reasons to fire literally anybody who's coming close to the 90-day period previously, in my opinion, is super super obnoxious. And the fact that your mom and grandma basically protested on their way out is honestly such a funny way to get revenge that honestly, this casino absolutely deserved. An annoying customer makes my job a living nightmare as we find him completely intoxicated in the bathroom of our restaurant. And overall, I'm honestly just so sick of dealing with this guy. Here's what happened. I'm a 21-year-old female and I used to supervise a restaurant. There was a guy who I'll call Steve, that's not his real name, who really wasn't problematic until he became a dedicated regular. This guy would plant himself at the bar for hours and ask questions every two minutes or so and interrupted staff a lot. He would say stuff like, hey, hey you, do you think I'm a funny guy? Do you like puzzles? And honestly most questions were harmless, but like dude, we're trying to work. Anyways, one weekend there was a band and all of the staff were relieved that it was a bit too loud to hear his questions. Now he always got the same beer and had maybe two to three beers, but that night he ordered shots of Jägermeister, to which he drank them in his own personal shot glass too. And since we follow the liquor policies, we had no problem serving him. Because it was busy, I had only seen this from a distance, but one minute Steve was chilling at the bar, and the next he was gone. For the next three hours or so, until the restaurant closed, no one had noticed that he left. Steve had left his glasses and shot glass on the bar to save his seat, but the bartender thought he just forgot them and left. At around 1 o'clock in the morning at closing, the security guard came in for their lockup routine, and the the doors were all good except for the bathrooms. They knock on the bathroom door and they say, excuse me, the restaurant is closed. Please vacate the restroom. Now, typically, if someone knocks while you're going to the bathroom, most people would say something, but we heard nothing. Assuming that whomever was in there was needing more time, the security said he would come back in a few. When security came back, they knocked on the door again and they didn't hear anything until they knocked really hard and said, hello, are you in there? Please notify us if you're in need of assistance. The restaurant is closed. Now, the restaurant had many elderly patrons, and we assume that someone might have fallen or injured themselves, so the security guard looked at me like, what in the world should we do? And it's right then that we heard a groan. Now, of course, we knocked again with the same speech and heard another groan. Thinking it might be a medical emergency, the guard calls for his boss. Right as we're debating whether or not we have just cause to kick the door down, guess who comes out of the bathroom? And yes, you probably guessed right. It's Steve in the bathroom. He strolls up to was scratching the front of his pants and had vomit all over his shirt. He was yawning while saying, uh, hey, who's got my glasses? And we all just kind of stared at him when he said that. Steve proceeded to sit back down at the bar as we asked him to leave. Then he put money on the bar and shuffled out in his flip-flops, talking about how he had a great nap in the bathroom. And honestly, I'm so sick of Steve because this guy is extremely annoying. Wow, I'm surprised this guy hasn't gotten banned yet, to be completely honest with you, because not only is he bothering staff and other customers, Customers, but also, this guy, like, fell asleep in the bathroom of the restaurant. Like, seriously, I think it's time for him to, like, go home and find some other place to go to. Because his behavior, in my opinion, was completely unacceptable. My restaurant job is absolutely awful, and it's currently leaving me thinking about quitting to find another job, simply because I'm so fed up with the way I get treated. Here's what happened. So, I started working at a pretty nice Italian place, and I worked as a manager at a steakhouse and seafood restaurant for over a decade in the past. Within the first few 
few weeks working there, I notice a lot of signs that the owners are cheap and they are definitely penny pinchers. For starters, on my nightly checkout and reports, I notice a few dollars was taken out of my tips every night for a mysterious charge, and they already take out about 5% of the tip pool. But after a few nights, I asked another server, and she said that's how they pay for the computers. I was confused and I asked what she meant. She said that the point of sale system costs money every month to use, and that's how they pay for it. They take some of our tips every single night. My response was to ask if she was serious, but she didn't even seem to find that odd. Another example is that they don't give utensils or napkins on orders that are to go. They say it's to cut back on all of the cost. They set about four of these cheap restaurant rags around at the side stations for cleaning, and if you need a new one, you have to go to the office and ask for one. Last week, they implemented a new policy about requesting time off. You can't request a day or two days off. You can only request three or more days off. If you do just want one or two days off, you have to wait for the next week's schedule to come out and ask someone to cover your shift for you, which is almost impossible, by the way, because they're open Tuesday through Saturday and almost everyone works five days a week. So if you can't find anyone, you can't get the day off. I was a manager for over a decade, and it's clear to me that they're just trying to get people to not request days off or they're just too lazy or incompetent to write a schedule. I did it for years and managed to schedule people accordingly. The management said they are doing it this way because they have too many request off slips and it's hard to keep track of all of them. But honestly, worst of all is the owner themselves. He's this old Peruvian guy who's balding on top and has a ponytail. And he's notorious around town for being an absolute weirdo in the worst possible way. He had to sign the business over to his wife, who's like 30 years younger than him, all because he had so many inappropriate behavior lawsuits, if you know what I mean, where it basically made it more financially viable for it to be under her name. He berates and insults us regularly, but he has learned to pretty much leave me alone because when he does it to me, I just basically look at him in the eye to let him know that I'm not scared of him, which seems to work because he's just a big bully. Now, for example, my second week I was cutting bread and he ran over and said, no, 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 you're cutting it too thick. And I said, oh, you want thinner slices? Okay. He then said, no, not okay. I fire people who say okay. I just look at him and I said, thank you. And then I walked away. Like, what in the world is he talking about? He does stuff like this all the time. Sometimes he can be kind of chill, but you never know when he will fly off the handle and be a jerk. Also, the overall vibe of the employee seems to be a bit off to me. Like, they have some kind of superiority complex. My family ran a restaurant for over 20 years, and it definitely wasn't as high class. Think of something more like Red Lobster than anything else. But unfortunately, we had to close it down because Texas Roadhouse bought the lot it was on. We weren't fancy per se, but we served wine and lobster and crab and prime rib, and we were big in the community and we were well loved. On my first day at this place, I was talking to a couple of the waitresses about it, and they were straight up talking trash about my family's business right in front of me. They said to me, yeah, I heard awful things about that place. I went and it was awful. I've only heard awful things. And I said, wow, you talk a lot of garbage for me standing right here. Another time, I was talking to the kitchen manager about a meal she hosted for some big shot guest and I made a joke about how I like to eat Taco Bell and she said, okay well this isn't Taco Bell and this isn't your family restaurant. We do things much differently here. Now I'm a pretty laid back guy and I generally let things just roll off my back plus I'm only working this job to earn money while I go back to school to get my degree but the attitude and general atmosphere of the place does great on me. I'm not crying every night or anything like that but the thought of my next shift does give me a small amount of anxiety because I feel like I'm entering a somewhat hostile work environment every shift. There are actually some really cool people there, but most of them are just younger staff members, plus the kitchen who barely speaks English. I'm thinking of quitting for a better place though. The tips are all right, but servers only get like 15 to 20 hours a week. So every two weeks, my check is only $1,500 or less. So honestly, would you put up with this kind of stuff at a restaurant? Because right now, I seriously don't know what to do. First off, to answer your question, no, there's no way I would ever put up with that. But also, if I was in your shoes, I definitely would be getting out of there. Like, there's no reason for you to be putting up with that kind of garbage, especially with what you've described. Like, that seriously sounds awful. I would not want to work in that kind of environment. So hopefully you're able to find a better job because what you literally just described sounds absolutely awful. And in my opinion, you absolutely deserve a much better working environment. My grandparents are so obnoxious about Thanksgiving every single year. As both 
both sets of my grandparents always seem to have conflict over who's coming to their Thanksgiving dinner. And I'm honestly so sick of the drama that I now don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So all my life, Thanksgiving was my favorite holiday. Every year, we spent the whole of Thanksgiving with my mother's parents. There would be lots of games, some sports that we would play, and a Thanksgiving dinner that simply couldn't be beat. And then, lucky me, I'd get to spend the next day with my other grandparents for Thanksgiving number two, where we would eat their leftover turkey at brunch. Now, little did child me know that this holiday would be embroiled in decades of family politics and conflict. So, gather round as I tell you the insane history, and you can understand how now, even seven months in advance of next Thanksgiving, it's all about to fall apart. Strap in, because this is kind of a long story. To make it easier for all of you to follow, I'm going to call my maternal grandparents Matilda and Matthew, and my paternal grandparents Patricia and Patrick. And no, these are not their real names. Now, the status quo I described above is the result of an unsteady peace treaty between two warring factions. To be clear, this was the contract. Thanksgiving would be held at Grandma Matilda and Grandpa Matthew's house, with Thanksgiving too at Grandma Patricia and Grandpa Patrick's house. And Patricia and Patrick would also get to host the first night of Passover in the spring. This way, everyone was happy. Now, how did we get this way? Well, in the beginning, when my parents got married, they used to alternate. One year, it would be at Matilda and Matthew's house, and Passover would be at Patricia and Patrick's house. Then, the next year, they'd flip. And this was a perfectly reasonable compromise that made everybody angry for some reason. And by everybody, I mean all the grandparents. And I guess that both sides just wanted it all for themselves. The first inflection point came when great-grandma Pamela passed away. And great-grandma Pamela is Patricia's mother. Patricia, rather understandably, really wanted to host Thanksgiving that year, just to have the whole family close. And so, my parents went there instead. Mind you, this was all before I was born. To my knowledge, Matilda and Matthew were okay with this, but the problem came the following year. Patricia and Patrick still expected to host Thanksgiving, because according to them, it's their year, isn't it? Unsurprisingly, that argument went over like a lead balloon. My parents then proposed the second reasonable compromise that made nobody happy. The grandparents can trade years hosting, but the other set of grandparents would be invited. This worked for exactly one year. The year following great-grandma Pamela's death, Thanksgiving was hosted at Grandma Matilda and Grandpa Matthews, and Patricia and Pamela went there as well. And by the way, it's not like these people don't get along together or anything like that. They just happen to be completely insane in inconvenient and incompatible ways. The following year, my father asked Grandpa Patrick to invite Matilda and Matthew, and was flat out told that no, that's not going to happen because there's not enough room. Now, on the one hand, Patrick and Patricia live in a New York City apartment, so space is legitimately limited. But on the other hand, like seriously, are you kidding me? So my father told him either invite them or we as a family wouldn't come. And the answer was still no. So that is how we arrived at the accord that I described earlier. But in contrast, this one stuck. It lasted for over two decades and throughout the entirety of my life until Grandpa Patrick passed away in 2011. Grandma Patricia, again completely reasonably, wanted the whole family together and asked my parents if we could do Thanksgiving at her house that year. Only this time, Grandma Matilda put her foot down. Now, I should explain a little bit about Matilda. Thanksgiving had become, after 25 years, her special holiday. It was the largest gathering that side of the family held every year, and it was and is very important to her. She also didn't have a whole lot of sympathy for Grandma Patricia, in part because of prior shenanigans and because she got Passover every year, but also because she gets Thanksgiving too every year. So, according to her, it's not like Patricia won't get to see us. It's been well known in my family that Thanksgiving at Matilda's is non-optional, and my parents were told that no exception would be made for Patrick's death. My parents, very torn to this point, made the decision that we would honor the terms of agreement and spent Thanksgiving at Matilda and Matthew's place. And I'm told that Grandma Patricia has never forgiven them for this. And so, for the past decade, that's how things stood and everyone was kind of happy except for my parents. For one thing, getting to Matilda and Matthew's house on Thanksgiving is a pretty big pain in the butt. With Thanksgiving traffic, it's about two hours each way. Also, the guest list at Thanksgiving includes some branches of the family they don't get along with. And the guest list has to be the same every single year because that's simply the way that it has to be. Lastly, my parents would very much like to host some family events themselves every once in a while. Honestly, the whole situation has become very exhausting for my parents, who basically never get to enjoy the holidays any more and haven't for years. These concerns have
have been raised, they have been considered, and probably ignored. Now, Grandpa Matthew is getting older and rather unwell, and we are now worried that he may not be physically or mentally capable to keep hosting Thanksgiving. This, and many other reasons, has led to rampant speculation over the past few years as to whether the mandatory traditions would finally end. But just the other day, Grandma Matilda made it clear to my mother, as long as they're living in their house, they will keep hosting Thanksgiving. As an aside, that's a lovely intersection with a separate argument because my mother wants Matilda and Matthew to move closer to any of their adult children for their own well-being. This finally brings us to the present day. My parents have decided that they will not be attending Thanksgiving at either grandparents' house. They are either going to host for themselves and invite any family members brave enough to join them or go down to Florida to visit my sister, who's been doing a PhD program there and is barely able to visit home once a year. None of the grandparents know this yet, and when this decision is announced, it's going to be a nightmare. So I have a few questions that I'm kind of wanting to get answered. Do my parents just go the scorched earth route of hosting for themselves, or should they use my sister as an excuse and go visit her? And also, which family members do they invite? What should my various aunts and uncles on both sides of the family do? They want to have all these details ironed out in advance, just so they can present a united front. Also, what should I and my partner do? My parents told me that we have their blessing to do Thanksgiving however we want this year. So I mean, do we just go with my parents? Do we go to Grandma Matilda and Grandpa Matthews anyways? Or do we go to my partner's house for the first time in the five years that we've been together? What should I do? Wow, this is seriously some crazy drama that's going on right now. For starters, this contention over Thanksgiving of all holidays is like really weird to me. Thanksgiving has always just been like this precursor to Christmas for me. And it's not really a holiday that I ever take super seriously. So all this drama between your grandparents, in my opinion, is really funny. But more to the point, I think it's important for you to remember that you and your partner have the freedom to do whatever you want. If you want to go literally anywhere else for Thanksgiving, then you absolutely can do that. This drama sounds obnoxious to deal with, and it sounds like there's some politics in the family that I would try to steer clear from. So hopefully this all works out for you, and hopefully your grandparents understand where everyone's coming from. Because honestly, from the sounds of it, it seems like they're going to be offended pretty much no matter what. And in my opinion, that is not your fault in the slightest. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.